In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bless me, Father, for I'm about to sin. Temptation has come my way, and we are back again with another switch. Will this one meet the fate of the switch killer, or will it work again? So this was sent into my PO box by Tom, a viewer. He also sent in a Game Boy Color that I've recently worked on. It must have been a good year, if not two years, since I've looked at the Switch, which is odd because I always used to look at Nintendo Switches. Now I feel like they're completely alien to me. Anyway, with this one here, he swapped over the charge port at the bottom and it still didn't work or it's still some issue. And then he thought it was the M92 chip. So basically it just keeps coming up with this error here. There we go. 21010001. So we said, would I like to take a look at it? And the answer to that is yes, because I haven't looked at a switch in ages. So let's get over to the map, see if we can fix this one, or will it meet the fate of many other switches that I've got my paws on throughout the years? Let's find out. Well, I'm just holding down the power button, trying to turn it off. Don't know if it was going to go or not. And there we go. Let's undo all the screws at the back. Well, so the background here is apparently Tom's changed out the USB-C port and then he went to change out the M92 chip and I think he ran into difficulty. Looks like he's included two of them here for me, so that's uh, that's good. If they're new ones, hopefully they're gonna hopefully they're gonna work. So we might change out the chip and it still might not work. Might change out the USB-C port and it still might not work because maybe there's other problems on here. But I think that error code is to do normally with the M92. Right, okay, okay, uh, the thermal paste has gone from here. Let's take out the battery. And this is where the M92 chip goes. Well, let's take the board out completely and let's see if we can get it back in. I think there's a big mound of solder in the middle there. We're gonna have to wick some of that away because otherwise the chip's not gonna connect around the edge and maybe that was the problem when Tom tried to do it. Really, you need very little solder on that or not that I'm an expert but you push down you push down on the chip and then that solder there will actually shoot its way out into kind of big balls down here but I think it'd be a lot easier if we took most of that off if I'm honest with you I haven't missed working on Nintendo switches I think I uh, I got a bit bored of working on them it's a shame isn't it because you need to work on something to get good at it but then you get bored of working on it well I do Yay, we're free. We are free. Right, let's have a look, look at the port to begin with. Do you know what? Let me get my microscope set up so we can have a nice uh, nice close look. All right, so we zoom right in on the port now, and they do actually look to be connected. Connected. Ah, oh, that's not connected. Ah, oh, that's not connected. No, okay, so the port's not connected, and also looks a little bit fluxy. These ports are a nightmare. Other people make them look easy, but uh, I think I've done them once or twice. But it's, they're, they're horrible to work on. Right, anyway, it's not turning on. This wouldn't stop it from turning on. It would stop it from charging. There's no point in messing with the port yet until we get it to turn on. So let's look at this M92 here. Right, okay, I think there's a few things that's moved around the place. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a, another board just to see, because that shouldn't be like that. Not sure where that goes, maybe it's just to that point there. Not sure if there should be something here, that looks a little bit wobbly. Yeah, okay. It might be just that one. Little resistor. So I'm just going to prepare the pads ready for the new chip. It just involves wicking some of the old solder away and adding a little bit of flux and then adding some new leaded solder to it, wick everything off and then just have some fresh leaded solder around the edge and a little bit in the middle as well. So now hopefully it's ready to accept the new chip. Right, so I've got the chip here, and that's the little dot. Can you see the dot in the corner there? So we know which way to put it. So it's going to go in that orientation there. Because that arrow is pointing to the dot. I'm just going to heat this area up first of all, and I'm going to see if I can get that little resistor back into position. I've got my airflow set to 140 out of a possible 200, and we're at 500 degrees Celsius.
Right, so the lead is sold is melted, but it hasn't melted here yet, the unlead is. Lead is sold and melts at a lower temperature, you see. There we go. Right, so that's in place there. So, this is a brand new chip, but I'm hoping there's enough solder on the board for it to stick to. I think that's nearly in the middle. Let's give it a little nudge test. No. Right, I think the blob of solder might be too big in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the heat off it, let it solidify, I'm going to push down. Right, no, so it didn't solidify there. Annoying. Right there. There you go, I think that's the middle. Right, let it solidify. There, can you see that going, the change in here, right now. I'm gonna force it down, and maybe some solder might come out from the middle. Yeah, there's the ball, can you see the ball here? At four or five o'clock, or four o'clock. Right, okay. Oh, and a ball at the bottom as well. So I'm gonna come straight along now with my soldering iron and a bit more flux and let's get rid of those balls Managed to get it on those capacitors there. They might be joined anyway. I'll use some. Uh... Oh, come on. I'll use some wick on that in a minute. Well, I think that's done. There we go. Right, let's clean that and see what it looks like. Right, well that's it on there. I mean, there's plenty of solder on there. They don't look perfectly aligned, but they're not far off. There's no bridges on that one there. Plenty of solder on there as well. And it looks to be in the middle, so I think it's gonna be okay. Let's put it back together and let's just see if it is now coming to life. Then we have to worry about the actual uh, uh, charging port. So personally I struggled with that massively and the schoolboy error there was that I didn't tin the chip before putting it on. If I had tinned the chip it would have just gone on probably first time nice and easy. Even now at the end there it wasn't jumping into place which is annoying because that's what's so beautiful about using hot air when you give it that little nudge and it does that and just goes back. You give it one nudge and then it goes back. It wants to go back because solder wants to stick to solder. So that for me there was not satisfying whatsoever, but I don't think I've ever used a new chip on one of these, and that was the mistake I used because normally when you take a chip of another board, it's still got some solder on it. So uh, yeah, that's that. All right, here we go, what do you think, yes or no? I'm gonna say yes. Will it turn on? Good. Is it going to go further? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Oh, brilliant. Result. All 
Right, so it's not charging. Let me just see if uh, if it charges directly here. Right, so it's not charging there. And it's not charging there. Right, okay, so it's not charging, but I think that's just a port. So, oh, what a shame. So now I've got to mess around with this port. I hate, hate this port. Right, I found some. These would have been bought years ago. So I'm pretty sure that's it there. Yeah, there. So what makes it so hard is that there's two layers of pins on. Hold on, that's sealed, wasn't it? That was definitely sealed. It looks like it's... Uh, Maybe this was bought so long ago they had to be harvested from Nintendo Switches. Yeah, okay. Well, the pins do look straight, don't they? But yeah, it definitely looks like it's been uh, used, doesn't it? So I'm just applying a little bit of fresh solder to each of these pins here. It's leaded solder, so hopefully it will melt a little bit easier when the hot air goes on it. The thing that makes this one hard for me is the hidden row of pins, because you can only use the hot air. You can't use a soldering iron to get to them. So I removed the old port, put this replacement one in, and then we can hopefully test it. When it's cooled down a bit, I notice there is a bridge, so let's deal with that now. I'm gonna to try to get rid of that tiny little bridge there. I don't know how I managed to do that. Let's see whether a hot soldering iron will just lift it off. Oh, nearly had it. Right, brought it down. Come on, come off. Yes. Oh, has it gone here or is that? No, there we go. Right, let's see if they're stuck. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Right, okay, I am quite happy with that. I'm just gonna give it a real good clean all the way around here. So, I'm not sure if it is gonna work yet, but right now I'm thinking it will, hopefully. Right, that's enough screws and stuff in for the time being. Let's plug that in. Let's see if it's still turning on. Yes. Right, first of all, I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. See if it's charging with this, because I know that this is gonna work. Actually, I haven't used this lead before on here, but let's give it a go. Uh-oh. Maybe it doesn't go in far enough. Oh, there we go. Oh no, and this is this lead. That's worrying. Let's get the actual Nintendo Switch charger. Oh no. It's not charging. That's weird, I thought that would have charged. Oh no, that's terrible. What's up, is that normal? It's like pulsing round, why is it not just going round? You know what I mean? That doesn't seem quite right either. Oh no. Right, I wonder could it be, not, not overly happy with that either. I wonder could it be that tiny little fuse down there which isn't allowing it to go through. So let's shut this thing down. Gutted. I think the port itself might be okay though. Maybe the fuse is blown. Let's pop the battery out. I was thinking earlier that it was quite nice working on this because the video's not gonna go on all day. 
And now it's uh, you know it's, it's still not working, so this just might be another video where it just goes on forever and ever, which is a real shame. Right, let's see. I'm pretty sure that that port is. Uh, I think that port is okay. Let's see if it's this tiny little fuse here. Nah, fuse is all right. Right, I'll tell you what. Let's do this, and let's plug it in. This shouldn't start it up because it doesn't recognize that there's something plugged into it. Let's see what voltage we got in the battery, see if it makes any difference at all. Right, so we've got 3.7 volts. Yeah, it makes no, diff <coughs> makes no difference if we're plugged in or not. Right, so would we have voltage here then on this fuse? 5.2. So let's unplug that. Let's see what we got here. Ah, right, so the charge port is okay because look, you see there 0.6, yet when we plug this in, it goes up to 5.2. So I wonder what's responsible. This is a job for the coder. I wonder what's responsible for charging. See, as far as I know, that was the charge chip up here. No, this is the charge chip down here, isn't it? Right, remember I had a little resistor that was off earlier on. It was done to the side. Well, it made me think, I wonder if there's something else missing. Because if a capacitor's missing, hmm, big deal. If a resistor's missing, the path no longer travels along there, does it? Because with a capacitor, it might be just cleaning up the signal. But with a resistor, it's going through the resistor onto somewhere else. So if the resistor is missing, it's not going on to somewhere else. Now, I've just picked this board out from one of my spare ones. And there definitely is a resistor up here that's not here. So let me zoom right in to show you. If you have a look, can you see up here, we have solder on the pads and a resistor on the right-hand side. Just here. And on this board here we have two resistors. So I'm going to take that resistor off, put it on here, and then let's see if it starts charging. You never know. So I use a high air station and I take the resistor off the donor board and I put it onto this board here. Let's see now if it's going to start charging. Now let's plug it in. See if it's still turning on. Be nice if it was just that. Or well, maybe that resistor will now fix the fan because I think that chip above it is something to do with the fan. Right, are you going to charge? Come on. Be nice if it did. No, you're not. Ah, oh, come on. I don't know what that resistor's for then. Is the fan going to spin up? I don't think that fan's working properly. I don't think I'm going to be able to fix this. Do you know what? Let's swap that fan out. If we can get that fixed, that might give me hope to keep uh, chasing. Although it's a little bit bent up, it is spinning very freely. So I don't think it's a problem with like friction on the fan. So I'm just going to put in a spare fan to see if that's behaving the same way. It might be something on the board that's making it go like this, or it could be the fan itself. Yeah, here we go. Fantastic. Look at that. Spinning nicely now. So, kind of weird. Something wrong with that fan. Right, I've just remembered I've got this thing here and it was sent to me years ago. And it says here, I've been watching your videos for some time now and came across this item. I thought you might find use for it in the future. Thank you for your videos from Robert Schlapp. So, uh, yeah, let's plug it in. And this might tell me whether we have continuity. I've unplugged it from here with the USB port from here, you know, to the pins. So, if I was to go between, for example, here, so that comes up as shield, ground, and then maybe I could go across here and it might give me an idea of what's what. I wonder whether that's the other side. How about this one? Right, so, there. That's going to be ground next to it. There. 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 
There. Well, that proves that at least those pins are okay. I can't test the pins on the other side, but I, I think my port's okay. Thank you, Robert. That is, uh, I can't believe I haven't used that up until now. Right, I think I've seen something that could be a potential fault. Remember, I put a, well, a dollop of solder up here on the uh, capacitors. I'll zoom in in a minute. I don't think I've removed it fully because I was looking around the board with this and check this out. So the top of these are grounds, but the bottom are not. But look, the left one and that one are now shorting. Yeah, so the right one and the middle one are not shorting, but the left one and that are shorting. I think there's still solder in between them. So maybe, because obviously this is responsible for the charging along with this charge chip down here, and if two of the capacitors are shorted, we've shorted two of the pins on here. I think that might be the problem. So look, look here. Can you see here? There's a lump of solder just in between these two bits here. Here. So let's get the soldering iron on. Let's try to get the wick and go in there and hopefully this time it will take it out. I've got my hopes up now. I'll be disappointed if this is not it because this makes sense. It makes sense why it's not charging with this here, you see. I think it's still in the middle of it. Yes, right. Let's see now if it's shorting. Please don't short. Here it goes. So, still got the grounds. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Now, are you shorting? No, you're not, and you were before. No, you're not. Excellent. So now I presume that one goes to there. That one probably goes to there, and maybe that one goes to there. Right, let's give that a little clean. Please work now. So first of all, are you going to turn on? Yes, now come on, please, please, please. I haven't had a yes moment in a long time. Yes! Unplug. Going this way. Thank God I didn't have to change that port over again. Oh, you beauty. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Let's see now if the coders thing is going to work. So that goes in there. 14, uh, 14 volts current. It's not doing anything current. I must have this the wrong way round. So now, one second. No, but that means I'd have to plug it into there. How do I? Uh, how would I do that now? How would this thing work then? I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's plug this in here and let's see if it's charging at 15 volts. Because it wasn't charging at that earlier, was it? On the fuse. Top of the fuse. Yeah, there we go, 15 volts. I'm sure, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Right, okay, uh, I am going to, so happy with that. We've gotta see if it docks as well. So let's turn it off, gonna give it a nice good clean up, put some thermal paste at the back, and then uh, see if it docks, and that'll be it, job done. Oh, fan spinning as well, fantastic. Oh, result. Oh, I could cry. Right, so this is the OLED switch here, just in the old dock, because I just wanted to make sure it does work in the old dock, and it does. And this is Tom's switch here that I've been working on for most of the day. And as you can see, the screen goes out, but nothing's coming up on here. <laughs> so it just doesn't dock, which I'm gutted about, because it's charging and stuff. You can see the symbol there changes when I pick it up, and it goes to black. Watch this, when I pick it up, you can see charging and then it stops but yeah it doesn't uh, 
it doesn't dock. Right, what I'm going to do is I am going to leave it for this video because I've already got so much footage on here and I don't want the video to go on for hours and hours. Right, it's the next day now and things have got even stranger. I was going to just leave it and do a revisit video on why it doesn't dock. I thought it might be 40 hidden pins here. But basically, it's really weird. It's showing that it's charging. I haven't got it fully back together, but you can see here that we have a charging symbol. Yeah. 1% if you have a look here you can see that it's charging if we unplug it and plug it back in again it will come up that it's charging and that works both ways yeah but it isn't actually charging it's trolling me it's not actually charging because this battery is getting lower and lower we're now at 1% look if I go across here and here you will see that the charge isn't growing you know it should be climbing up shouldn't it it should be now 7 6 then it should be 7.7 seven, and it should go up. Now that it's now that I've said this, it will go up, but it won't go up. It will go up a little bit, but then it, well, there you go, see it's going down again. And look, if I uh, unplug it and plug it back in again, it makes no difference. Okay, so that's there now. Hold on, let it go a little bit more. There, plug it in. And you see it hasn't jumped up, has it? Plug it in this way. We should get quite a big increase as more voltage is pushed into it. I know it looks like it's climbing, but it's not. If I kept it there for five minutes, it's not going to move past that there. Yeah? So, I don't know if I can put much more energy into this. I was looking forward to doing a Nintendo Switch, and now that I've started, and now that this is my second day on it, I'm... Uh, I'm back to the thinking that <laughs> I think I've had enough of them, if I'm honest with you. It'd be nice if I was just to change that chip and it was to work. It'd be nice if I was just to change the port and it was to work. But, uh, you know, to do both of them and it's still not working is upsetting. Especially when it's given, you know, it's given me something, isn't it? It does look like it's good now, but it's just not good. So what I've done this morning is off camera, I've swapped another port on. So I put another port on. These ones were brand new. There was nothing on the pins at all. And it went on quite well truth be told and also I swapped over this chip here for this one but it's still behaving the same so now I know that there was nothing wrong with that other chip so I don't really know what to do now because I don't know how much time to spend on it so the USB port is still bothering me because the hidden pins I actually have no idea if they're connecting or not so I'm using a little USB-C breakout board again just to go to different parts of the board and then I discover this that filter is tombstoning, so maybe that's putting some weird uh, fault on it. Can you see there? So that was probably when I was heating from underneath here, maybe my tweezers slipped. Let's get that back in. Now this switch is definitely getting to me. This should have been easy. Melt the solder pop down the tombstone in filter. Do you know how many times it blew away? Whatever you guess, it won't be enough. You ready? One. Oh, I'm on. Okay. Two. Three. And the passages. Four. Five. And the capacitors. Six, seven, eight. Mm, was that one? Eight, no, well, nine, 10. And next one goes 10. 10 goes that took me. Oh my word, 10 goes. And how many years have I been doing this now? I know I should have lowered down the airflow. I think this switch is just messing with my brain now. Anyway, with the filter down, let's see now, will it dock? Will it give something back to me? Will it dock? Guess what? Surprise, surprise, it docks. What on earth? How can it dock when it's not charging? So I presume the reason it didn't dock before is because I mustn't have noticed that the filter was tombstoning. So uh, that's why it didn't dock before. <laughs> this is really annoying because we've done so much work to it, but it's still not charging. Look, it's gonna come up now, there you go. So I mean, it seems to dock quite reliably. I think I'm going to have to leave it for a revisit because I just can't see what could be wrong with it. 
Don't worry, my mate Vincers, I'm not throwing in the towel just yet. I'm going to get a good board and get diode readings between the good board and the bad board. And you never know, it might show something up. So stick with me. Uh, I am just going across here. So basically, I've got this. This is a working switch. In fact, I think with all this glue here, this was the one where the pads were completely ripped off and I had to work all this out. So if we go on this one, and basically I've just got my five volt supply in it. There's like these MOSFET things and on the MOSFETs they go from the fuse up to, I'm gonna call it a MOSFET, and we do have five volts. So for example, if I was to go on this side up here, you will see that I have got five volts. I'm gonna go across here. I can't actually see if I'm on the pins. Let me go into this resistor because I know it goes up to here. There you go five volts but yet you see these two pads here if I go on the pads here I don't have anything yeah but now if we go on to this one which does bring a charge up here this one is charging a battery because look if I go here you will see the battery is very low and when I plug it in it should jump up so 2.7 plug it in here there you go can you see already it's climbing yeah and have a look here we've got a a voltage here. When I go onto those two pads here, can you see we've got the five volts? Yeah, so I'm wondering if the MOSFETs have gone faulty on that one there. So rather than get too deep into it, I'm just going to take these three MOSFETs off and I'm going to put them on this one here and let's just see if it starts, uh, if it starts working. My oh my, I have been a busy bee. And I think I might have found something. What I was doing is, what was interesting is, when I plug in, let's see now, I've taken most of these things off. Basically, when I plug in five volts into here, I'm not getting, I'm getting like five volts on the first MOSFET, but I'm not getting five volts on the MOSFET on the right hand side. So if you have a look here, can you see? I've got five volts there but yet I'm not getting it on this MOSFET on this side here yet when I went across this board I've since taken off the MOSFETs when I went on across this board I was getting five volts on both sides so that says to me that the gate on this first MOSFET is not being enabled to turn the MOSFET on to put the power through to the next one I think I could be wrong about that but I then thought okay well where does the gate go to so let me zoom in let's unplug that Luckily, from ages ago, I had this board where I've stripped most of the components. And if I put it to continuity, I've been ages on this, <laughs> but look, if you have a look here, I think this one here, that's the first MOSFET here, and I think this is the gate on the bottom right. And I was going around the whole board, and eventually, boom, it came up here. Yeah, just here. Now, the one underneath it goes to this pad on the MT chip, yes? And I thought, okay, well, what's there? And check this out. There is a tiny, tiny resistor. Let me zoom right the way in. It's tiny. But there's a tiny resistor just here. And it could be because it's so small, I don't think I'm getting a reading through it. I think the resistor has gone completely open. So see this resistor here, I'm going to zoom out now. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's give it a good clean up so I get a nice contact on it. I think the resistor has gone open, just like it had on the uh, power supply on the Nintendo 64. Watch this. Let's get the meter in view. Now, Ohms, just gonna have to see what I'm doing in a second. Oh, that's annoying. It wasn't giving me a reading before, but it is in the meg ohms, isn't it? In the meg ohms, yeah? There's nothing. Right now, let's go on to another board. In fact, let's go on to this board here. Let's disconnect the battery, because we know that this one here works. And let's go on to it on this one and see what it reads. It's so tiny. Please don't be in the mega ohms. 
Please don't be in the Megomes. Well, it's not Megomes, it's a bit confused. But look, it's not in the Megomes, is it? It's struggling to give me a reading. Right, let's go on to one more board. Right, it's giving me that weird reading again, so I think that's just probably my meter. It's kind of like in between a range and it's getting confused, but it's not doing that on the board that I've been working on. So, let's take off the resistor. Imagine if it was the resistor that caused me all these problems. Because you see, it comes from the chip on the bottom on the bottom leg, and then it goes through the resistor and down to the gate of here, yeah? So if it can't get to the gate because the resistor isn't allowing the path through, it's not gonna turn on the gate. So I'm really hopeful, because basically it goes from the gate to the bottom of the resistor, and then from the top of the resistor, it goes to that pad there. How good is that? I hope it's an open resistor. Right, I'm gonna have to do this under the microscope because it's so, so small. Well, right, I've got my temperature at 500 degrees Celsius, and I've got my airflow just at 78 out of a possible 200. I hope I don't lose this now because it's tiny. Gotcha. So now we're going to get the faulty switch, take off the faulty resistor, put a good resistor on there and hopefully, come on now, hopefully it will start charging. I've shown some dedication to this switch. Another thing which shows dedication, if you've got Netflix, is check out the David Beckham documentary. My wife wanted to watch it and I sort of thought, ugh, I don't really know if I want to. Anyway, after the first episode, I was hooked. I think there's only four episodes in it. Well worth a watch. That guy has proper dedication. When the whole of the country has turned against you and you still go out there and give it your best, that is proper dedication. And more dedication. Dedication to me, that is. That's the My Mate Vince Massive. Some of these guys have been on here for an absolute eternity. So now my mate Vince Massive members this month consist of kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeeps.com, DJVG, Pigsy, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Anthony Dean, Baza2, Russ Melanson, Gaspar Heller, Ricard Berglund, Jacob Culpin, Soul Reaver555, and Lucas Scott. So a massive thanks for sticking with me for so long. I'm amazed you do, but thank you. Now this pesky resistor should be about ready to go into place. Oh, tombstones. Ah, burning my hands. Come on, come down. Yes, we're in, we're in, we're in. We are in. Right, that's the old one now, the suspected faulty one. I want to see whether we're getting any reading from it at all. Let's see if I can get a reading. It's going to be too small to get a reading, I think. I'm on it. There's no reading. I'm on. I'm pretty sure there's no reading there. Really got my hopes up now because it makes sense because that M92 chip or whatever it is, MT92, it's just pinged off. It's uh, it can't communicate, can it? It cannot communicate with that first MOSFET type thing. Right now, here we go. So we are this one here. Let's see now what reading we're getting between the gate and the bottom leg of the chip. Look at that. Oh, you can't see it. It's jumping around. Just like the other ones. It wasn't doing that before. Look. 
So now if I plug it in and we have five volts on this one here, that will be the first time that that's happened. Come on, please, please, please. Right, come on now. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, yes! Did you see that? Look, for the first time ever, it jumped up. It went to one point something. One point there! Oh my, 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 my. Have we got now five volts on this one here? One second. We have five volts. Yes, we have. Amazing. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Whew. I've been on this for hours. Imagine if it was just that tiny, tiny, tiny resistor. Let's put this board back in. Let's give everything a clean. Oh, I've actually got like weird butterfly feelings because I've just been on it for so long. And I just thought, oh, you know, give up, give up. Who would have thought a tiny resistor? That's if it starts charging. Who would have thought it? But it makes sense because there was work done on here. So maybe, I don't know, maybe the heat was a little high and it burned that resistor out. Maybe the, the original problem all along was that resistor, that it failed. And then you would think to change that out, wouldn't you? And you would think to change that out and you would think to change this out. But maybe the original problem was that resistor from the very, very beginning. And that's why it wasn't charging, not sure. Oh my word. Come on now, I've really got my hopes up. Right, I think we are ready. Come on now. What do you think? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes, it's going to work. So, what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to plug in the actual 15 volt Nintendo Switch one and see if it turns on. Come on now. Please turn on. Yes! Did you see that? Did you see that? Oh, my, 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 my. It hasn't done that before. Okay. What's it say? 19% it reckons. Now, let's plug this in. Oh, you're going to start charging. You are. Look at that. Amazing, 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 amazing. It is working and charging. I can't believe it. So nice to see. 59%. So 100% it's charging now. And it's still docks. The card works there, the game card. Put it in here, it will come up on here. Oh, look at that. Oh, 59%. So, I think maybe the fault from the very beginning might well have been the resistor, not in my ownership of it, but beforehand. And then the port was changed over and the uh, the M chip was taken off. But maybe the whole thing was just resistor related and how nice was that? The tiniest of tiniest of specks of dust off a resistor caused this thing not to charge yet. It was lying to you, it says it's charging, but it wasn't charging. So it makes complete sense now because the pathway couldn't travel through from that chip to that what I am gonna call a MOSFET. So what a, what a happy, happy result. So a massive thanks to Tom for sending this out to me. I found it extremely challenging and I nearly gave up so many times, but I'm confident now that this switch is working just fine. So fantastic news. If you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. One more time for luck. Ah, oh, here we go. Result. Thanks for watching everyone. We wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright